Hello everybody, my name is Dennis Jensen and I hope that you enjoy modeling because this video is going to be all about modeling. So I would like to share some tips about how to make a model and uh, I recently just finished a three month project where we had to make a quadruped um, and I chose to make a robot worm I'll show you in a moment. But the challenge for me was that I was both making organic models and also hard surface models because it has hard legs but the worm itself is organic. So it was quite the challenge for me to uh, to make and also the UV mapping was hell. But I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, show you what I did. The animation was done by a guy called Nils Dalmer, so I can't really take uh, credit for that even though I would like to. So it's, uh, it's it has some flaws, but uh, I'm quite quite happy with the result. Um, so the first step for me when I start to model is that I look at a lot of reference. And most of the time you can find a lot of good pictures at uh, Google. But if you want to have nice reference, you should go to the library and uh, rent some books because you might not know what exactly you're searching for, but if you get a book, you will have a whole lot of pictures if you get some uh, books with a lot of photographs in them. <laughs> but uh, the point is that you have a lot of pictures in the book that you will never have searched on on Google because you're not quite sure what to search on. And the photo, uh, the guy who made the book, he had probably known a lot about the subject because he wrote a book about it or took some pictures to the book. So he had done a lot of research beforehand. So he knows what is important for this subject. Um, in my case, we made a concept art for it and we use the reference to make the concept art. In some cases you also want to make maybe a tea can in real life. And for that you can just find a lot of reference. I would probably, for that I would probably go on Google. But if you're making something more complicated, you should probably go get a book. So I think I've been talking enough, enough about books now. <laughs> so, when you got the reference, it's nice with a side view and a front view to get started from. So when you're ready to get started, oh, this is the final look that I had. Well, not the final, but almost. So this is what I started out with. I made a kind of a time lapse, and you can see I plugged in the most important parts. Right now it's just proxy for the legs. The legs are very um, low poly and not that detailed, so it looks kind of crabby. Um, but I got the most important loops around the eyes and around the mouth. It's really important that you get the edge loops right because those are going to deform later on. So it's it's really important. Let me just say it, like, say it that way. And your edge loops should uh, follow the shape of your concept. Um, yeah. Once you have the edge loops, you can start to uh, shape it. And you can see that I just kept shaping. And then I added the hard surface modeling. Um, the hard surface is actually not the smoothest. It's just uh, I just didn't model it in the resolution that was needed. I did this because if I if I smooth it afterwards or subdivide it, it will get a lot of uh, polygons that I don't really need. I only need the edges to be a bit smooth because. If you don't smooth the edges, it will be way too hard. It will look unrealistic. So a nice way to just smooth the edges are to use bevel. I know some people will complain about bevel because it will make triangles and stuff. Um, but the essential is that you don't you don't care about triangles when it's on a plat uh, on a planar surface. If it's on a planar surface, it doesn't make uh, your mess deform really. So you can get away with triangles and end guns if it just is flat. But if you're doing some organic parts, no triangles and no end guns. 
Um, so this is the model in Maya. And you can see I got the wig turned on. So let me just hide that for you so we don't get confused. Yes, so this is the clean model. And you might, if we go to the wireframe, you can see that the resolution is a lot higher. The reason for that is because I wanted to make I want to make something more realistic than I have been doing previously. So in order to get the nice deformation in the wig and in the skinning, I just added some more subdivisions. I took this subdivision into Mudbox and I pinched it so I could get some more details. Um, for example here and uh, also some other places. Um, but it's really important that you get used to the workflow from Mudbox to Maya because you can really um, uh, you can really shape very quickly in Mudbox. The problem is that you can't add subdivisions. So when you're shaping in Mudbox, you might notice that you need some subdivisions, and then you can go back to uh, Maya and add the subdivisions. So export the mesh again from Mudbox and go into or Cbus, whatever program you're using. And then you can go into uh, Maya or 3D Max or some other program and add, add the edge loops that you really need. And then you can take the new model from uh, Maya and plug it into Mudbox and work again on it. So it's a lot back and forth. I'm not that good um, at this workflow, so I'm still uh, trying to refine it. Once you're done with that, you get onto UV mapping. For me, I used the UV mapping on the body. I used a program called Roadkill. It is free and it's uh, really good. For the non-organic parts, I also used Roadkill, but um, mostly I actually used organic, no, not <laughs> organic mapping, automatic mapping in uh, Maya. It's really easy because it just takes four sides and then unfold it into your UV space. And then you can just cut it together so it gets um, so you can see what the actual shapes are and that's a really nice way to work because it's very fast and it's also it makes really nice UVs in this mess I had a lot of small uh, stuff like uh, screws so you could you could potentially UV map everything but you could also just use automatic mapping I uh, did UV most of the stuff I didn't use that much of automatic mapping on the small stuff uh, simply because I just wanted it that way. Keep in mind that if you're going to paint the textures in um, in Photoshop, it will be a lot harder to how can I say it to uh, to know what part is is what. So if you instead are painting in Mudbox or Cbus, it doesn't matter how the UVs are looking because you have the instant uh, feedback. In Mudbox, if you're painting in Photoshop, you can't see the 3D model as you're painting. You ha have to go into Maya. So that's a bit of a problem, and that's why I don't really paint in, uh, in Photoshop. But enough about that. This is about modeling. So this is the model in Mudbox. And then I really started on, um, on the details. Oh, I must admit that I would like to add a bit more time for this, for, because the details are quite... Um, soft still. It could be nice to go real deep and even do it more so it looks a lot more realistic. Um, yeah, but here I was just thinking about what the, what the kind of material should it be made of and how could I try to add that in the model. Um, when this was done, I extruded or extracted, sorry, a displacement map from Mudbox and applied it in Maya, of course. <laughs> yeah, and uh, then the modeling was actually done, and uh, I got on to rigging and uh, texturing, which I will probably talk a little about a little bit about in uh, some uh, later movie uh, videos. So I would really like to know what you think about this uh, movie or video. If you love it or hate it, it doesn't matter. Just Rather apply on uh, YouTube or the homepage. I would like to show you the homepage or website. And if you uh, 
want to learn more about modeling, I have these head modeling tutorials where I go really deep into how to model a head and how the edge loops should be. So it's really nice for beginners to uh, look at that. If you if you um, yes, sorry about that. If you go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash polyface com you can subscribe down here and I would really appreciate that that would be awesome because then you will see the upcoming videos and you can also say to the new videos I hate it or I like it or stuff like that this is a new concept where I try to make the videos more short so I just want to know what you think is this a good idea or a bad idea whatever so thank you for listening, I'm gonna make some awesome food, bye.